But we have one more very powerful thing that we want to take advantage of this morning. And it is a testimony. The Bible tells us that we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony and by the fact that we love not our lives unto the death. That means we're not going to deny Jesus even if you twist my arm, okay? That I am going to not love this life so much thinking that I can cling to it and hold to it. I am going to trust God for my eternity. And this morning, we have some very special members of our church, as each Sunday we have had, going to be sharing with us personal testimony this morning. And so, Pastor Ken, are you ready with our special guest this morning? I sure am. Won't you introduce them to us today? Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. And testimonies are very powerful. Amen. It's great to hear from different members of our church family and to listen to all the way that the Lord has led them. And we're so glad to have Zach and Richie Rowley with us today. And uh, they're going to share some of the amazing stuff that the Lord's done in your lives. And I know he's done amazing things. Amen. So, Richie, you uh, didn't grow up uh, as a someone who really knew the Lord, did you? Right. No. Um, I grew up Catholic. And, um, you know, we went to church, but only on the important days. Christmas, Easter, Good Friday. But still living in the world as worldly as one can get. So I know who God was. I know he was up there, but no relationship. So um, fast forward to turning 35. We've been married for uh, five years at the time, or four years. Um, and, Good memory. Yeah, Good I think memory. <laughs> we had a two-year-old. And um, just empty, just not having a good relationship, you know, wanting a divorce or something. So I'm in my closet and I'm, you know, I think I'm praying to God. And I said, God, if you're there, either take me out of this relationship or change it. And I said, and I asked for help clear as day. And I was like, okay. So uh, the day of my birthday, he doesn't say anything, doesn't even acknowledge anything. Um, so I go to work, and I have a friend, and I was like, you know, I've had it. I'm done. I'm going to go through with it. And she had been talking to a friend of ours. She's here today, oh, yeah. um, Leanne Kennedy. And Leanne says, send her to the third service podcast and have her listen to how, uh, wives' roles and husbands' roles. And so I'm scrolling to the podcast, never even know anything about this church, and I see a title that says Ashley's Testimony. So at the time, I was like, I skipped over what she said because I don't listen to anyone. Um, and so I'm listening. That's true. That's true. I'm listening, and I, and I hear this guy's voice. And I was like, maybe Ashley will come on any moment now, you know. <laughs> Didn't know at the time it's Pastor Ashley, Pastor Ron's son. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I'm deep in it, six minutes. He's talking about how he was prideful and hateful and angry. And I was like, that's me. I was mean, and he was saying how he starts talking about the love of God and redemption, and I was like, I can be redeemed, and so at six minutes in, I'm crying, and I'm texting Leanne, and I was like, Leanne, why am I crying? You know, what is this I'm feeling? I was like, is it guilt? And she's like, it's conviction, and I was like, what does conviction mean? <laughs> so I'm Googling conviction, and it tells me all these things, and, and she said, I think you just got saved, and I was like, what's that? <laughs> That's great. So I go home, and he's still the same and just wanting to fight. And I said, I'm not that same woman anymore, you know. Wow. I'm, I'm going to go through this change. And so we go to church that Sunday. I drag him with me. Leanne invites us, and thank God Pastor Ron likes to yell. because <laughs> <laughs> Kept him awake. Right? Yes, that is the only way he would listen. And... <laughs> And so I think he talked to us at the end, and we said the prayer, and, um, and I can tell he wasn't, you know, he loved Pastor Ron. He wanted to come every time, but he just, it wasn't touching his heart. So um, I'm, I'm in a Bible study with Katie Anderson, and she, you know, she's discipling me. It's just amazing. And she tells me, get this book, um, 31 Prayers, or 31 Days of Prayer, Praying for Your Husband. And so I, for a whole year, I was down on my knees just 
face down, just praying it every day. And he's talking to Pastor Ron, talking to getting discipleship for Pastor Ashley, and I'm ready to give up. You know, I'm just like, I can't do it anymore. You know, it's, it's interesting to me that even when, you know, after you had a real experience with the Lord and a, and a real change in your heart mm-hmm. and life, that some of the circumstances surrounding yes. stay the same, it right? It did, yes. And uh, that's an important aspect for new believers, especially, that we encourage them. Yes. Listen, uh, things might not change it exactly <laughs> yes, overnight. Yes, it did not. No, it right? did not. No. Uh, it needed all that discipleship, praying. And I didn't know at the time that there's oppression in our home. So I, it's a spiritual battle. And, you know, I was constantly yep. praying against it. And so... Um, Pastor Marcus also was trying to talk to him. He had to have all these people. <laughs> all kind of varieties. And um, yeah. he takes him to a, a, a leadership yeah. conference. And I hear about the story about he was looking for Zach. And he looks down and Zach's on his knees just praising. And oh. I'm just like, oh, it's happening. <laughs> oh. Marcus like, look, he's down there crying. I'm like, yeah, I'm crying. I'm a grown man. A grown man can cry. It's okay. Yes. <laughs> so um, he just comes home on fire for Jesus. And just, oh. you know, I'm like embarrassed now because he wants to talk to everybody, even at Waffle House, to yeah. talk to, about God. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, this is it. So it's just, it's just, it's been a journey. And, um, you know, we're here and hopefully making a difference. And serving the Lord. And, yeah. Well, Zach, what on earth? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I, time will elude us for me to talk about my life. But uh, <laughs> I will. I'll break it down. So I remember her getting saved and then uh, her telling me, you know, I love God more than you. I love Jesus more than you. I'm like, what? Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> And all it did was like make me more upset. Like how like how are you believing and loving this thing that you can't even see? Like I didn't mm-hmm. get it. You know, I came to church for a year and a half, sitting on the third row, second seat. I'll never forget, you know, having some substance in my body every day, some type of drug or, you know, whatever I could get my hands on for that day, something to just hide myself from myself. I was trying to avoid my own personal um internal struggles and battles and all these thoughts in my head and like you know that there's this warfare that goes on and you know I will say it took me it it was a process it was not me coming in the church just one time and I got saved like my wife did it was a continual thing but it's a decision that a man has to make Um, you know when a man sees himself losing everything that he loves there is turmoil inside them when I see my wife hates me You know, when I see that I've punched holes in the wall, like, there's just something inside of you that, you know, you have to make a decision to change. And, you know, over over time, listening to Pastor Ron, everything he said, the word of God was just piercing in my life. But it's a journey and it, it, you have to stick with it. And it is, it is a journey and it is for, uh, for some people, some people it's more instantaneous. Like Mm -hmm. you cried out to the Lord and God began to touch you and, and for you, it was a journey. Thank God that you had people, yeah. <laughs> people who loved you enough to keep loving you That's and, to, right. and to just uh, keep prodding you That's with right. the word of God, you know? You know, and, and a lot of it is like, like when we grow up as children, there's these voices and these things that are said to us. And, and we like take ownership of that. It's like negative prophecy spoken over our lives. Mm-hmm. And we live that negativity out. And it becomes anger and aggression. And then aggression turns into, like, substance abuse because I'm trying to hide something. You know, people turn to alcohol to try to do all this. And, and you know, sitting on that seat for so long with watching my wife still pushing forward, still, still praying, still saying, it's okay, I, I'm not going to argue with you. You know, there was something there that I just didn't understand. You know, and it took me a year and a half. And it took me going with Marcus you know, going to a YA conference, it all, all things, you know, this broken, angry, aggressive drug addict is in here with a bunch of youth pastors, you know, and I'm on the ground crying like a big old baby. Amazing. <laughs> what a great testimony. Praise the Lord. Well, listen, uh, I want you to, yeah, come on, give him a, praise God. And I'd like you just to, um, Say a word of encouragement, and uh, maybe both of you can. Okay. Just go ahead and let's start um, with Richie. Just, uh, just to bring up Katie there. again, uh, she actually sent me to a scripture. It was First Peter three one, and she and it talks about wives being submissive to your husband. Um, for those that don't obey the word, who do not who do not know the word, will be um, won over by the 
manner of life. Yes, you know? uh, yeah, conduct of their wives. So I just, that resonated with me, and I, I stuck through that thinking, if I just, you know, love Jesus and just he can see my actions and not fight, and maybe he would be won over. So awesome. it works. Awesome, good word. <laughs> well, I'll say, you know, with, with everything going on right now, there's people that are depressed, they're oppressed. You know, substance abuse is a big deal now. Alcoholism is a big deal now. And no matter where you're at in your life, you know, the Lord does not want to give you any type of things that are, that are negative like that. You know, the Lord wants to give you hope and freedom, and that is what the Lord wants to deliver to you. You know, Jesus didn't shed his blood on the cross so that we could be oppressed. It was for freedom and redemption and to have salvation and to change the way that we are living our life. And I will say that there's a lot of people that are living on both sides of the fence. They have one foot, you know, walking with the devil, and then the other foot's trying to walk with Jesus. And if you're on the fence and you're trying to make a decision today, I just really, really encourage you and challenge you to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Because in Revelation 3.20, it says, Look, I stand at the door and knock. Those who hear my voice and will open the door, I will enter and eat with them. And for all you who are, who are hearing the voice of God, just trying to speak to you, open that door. You have the key to unlock the door, but it starts with you. And when it starts with you opening that door and allowing him to come in, it changes your life forever. Amen. Amen. Great words. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Ryan. Amen. Wow. Uh, that is an amazing testimony. Zach and Richie, uh, you know, thank you so much for sticking in there, for hanging in there. Uh, and also, hey, Ashley uh, is probably watching today. And so, look, 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 son, it worked, okay? It yeah, worked. it worked. Look, here they are giving testimony. And, uh, and thanks so, so much Thank for you. all of those who participated. You know, uh, Leanne, uh, you know, uh, Katie, all those that, that were a part. You know, uh, Pastor Marcus, of uh, just sitting, uh, sitting down, listening. You know, uh, you know, being a friend, texting back and forward, and always pointing people toward the Word of God. Amen. Amen. That's how we can be our greatest help, even when we don't see a whole lot of progress. You know, uh, I actually finally got tired of meeting with Zach. Uh, <laughs> Zach, you probably remember you'd come in. I just kind of shake my head and go, "Oh, yep. you again?" Okay. Yep. After the third time, he's like, "You know, there's nothing more I can do for you." <laughs> you know, until you make a decision to change, I'm done, you know, because yep. men Look, are stubborn. Yeah. Like I told you, you know, I can't change you. Only you can change you. Now, I can give you the tools and I'd be honest with you, but only you can change you. That's and it. I tell you what, you did. I'm proud of you. Thank I'm you. proud of both of you. So proud. <laughs> Amen. Thanks again. Thanks for your testimony. Mm -hmm.